Transfer is now available as an app. Send money fast from your phone at great rates. Meaning more money reaches home. Where it can make things happen. For those you love most. And for a limited time, send instantly for 0% fees. Rapid Transfer. My Money, My Africa. Download it now. Ecobank, through its foundation, has actively supported this uh, project, both in kind, uh, cash and in kind, as I've said. And uh, Senior also then came in and said, uh, can we uh, do a very quick um, fund mobilization? And of course, we contacted our partner, Joy FM, who then said, we'll give you air time. So it's been a combination of efforts from both uh, sectors that are seen as where we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, the primary purpose of this, as I said, is to preserve the lives of our people. We share the belief that all stakeholders must act jointly to reduce the impact of the virus on our people. And if we act together, then we will see more of such. To the Ghana COVID-19 Private Sector Fund, we say thanks for the opportunity. God bless Ghana.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us electronically this morning to attend today's virtual annual general meeting. We will now invite Bishop Dodu Amu to say the opening prayer. Thank you, Mr. Chama. Um, may I please ask us all to bow our heads as we pray? Almighty God, we thank you for yet another year, and we thank you for today. We want to pray that your presence will be with us as we go through this meeting. Give us the counsel and the help in all the deliberations. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The quorum for the annual general meeting is made up of members representing the simple majority of the paid up issued shares of the company. As the registrars have confirmed to me that there are shareholders present holding more than a simple majority of the paid up issued shares, I declare the meeting open. The notice of meeting was published in the national dailies and also circulated to members. I will now invite the company secretary to formally read out the notice of meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, distinguished shareholders. Notice of meeting. Notice is hereby given that the annual general meeting of Ecobank Ghana PLC will be held virtually and streamed live on https colon double slash www.ecobankghagm.com from the head office of Ecobank Ghana PLC to Morocco Lane off Independence Avenue, Ministerial Area Accra on Friday, the fourth day of June, 2021 at 10.30 a.m. to transact the following business of the company. Agenda, ordinary business, one, to consider and adopt the statement of accounts of the company for the year ended 31st day of December, 2020, together with the reports of the directors and auditors thereon. Two, to declare a dividend. Three, to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the auditors. Dated at Accra this fifth day of May, 2021, by order of the board, Irabna Asafubwachi, company secretary. Notes, A, virtual AGM, COVID-19 guidelines. In accordance with the restrictions on public gatherings in force, pursuant to the Imposition of Restrictions Act 2020, Act 1012, attendance and participation of, by all members and all their proxies in the annual general meeting of the company this year shall be strictly virtual stroke by electronic means, into brackets, online participation. Two, a member entitled to attend and vote at the meeting is entitled to appoint a proxy to attend and vote in his, her, its stead via electronic means, into brackets, online participation. A proxy need not be a member of the company. Three, the appointment of a proxy will not prevent a member from subsequently attending and voting at the meeting via electronic means into brackets online participation. The proxy appointment shall be deemed revoked in this event. Four, a proxy form can be downloaded from the website of the company into brackets www.ecobank.com and should be completed and sent via email to shareregistry at gcb.com.gh or deposited with the registrars at GCB Bank Limited registrars and sent via email registrars, re registrar's office, excuse me, number two Thorpe Road, PO Box 134 Accra, 
no later than 3 p.m. on Wednesday, 2nd June 2021. B, accessing, participating, and voting at the virtual AGM. One, a unique token number shall be sent to all members by email, SMS, or by post from 21st May 2021 to allow for access to the virtual meeting platform, HTTPS colon double forward slash www.echobankghagm.com. Two, members who do not receive their unique token numbers may between 21st May 2021 to 28th May 2021 contact the registrars of the company at GCB Bank Limited, registrar's office, number two Thorpe Road, High Street, Accra, on telephone number 0302-668712 stroke 0244-338-508 stroke 0244-358-514 stroke 0244-318-079 or via email to share registry at gcb.com.gh to obtain their unique token numbers. Three, members shall be required to visit https colon double forward slash www.echobankghagm.com on Friday 4th June 2021 and input their unique token number in order to be able to access, to gain access and participate in the virtual AGM. Four, members who do not submit proxy forms to the registrar of the company before the AGM can vote via electronic means using their unique token numbers. Five, members are encouraged to submit their questions ahead of the AGM via email to eghagm at echobank.com. C, further information. The annual report of the company and further information on accessing, participating, and voting at the virtual AGM are available at https colon double forward slash www.echobankghagm.com. For further information, please contact the registrar GCB Share Registry, GCB Bank Limited, number 2 Thorpe Road, PO Box 134, Accra. Telephone numbers 0302-668712 slash 0244-338-508 slash 0244-358-514 slash 0244-318-079. Email to share registry at gcb.com.gh dated at Accra this 8th day of February 2021 by order of the board Irabna Asafubwache company secretary thank you thank you Abby <clears throat> fellow shareholders on behalf of the board of directors and management of your bank I have the honor and pleasure of welcoming you to today's annual general meeting. 2020 was rather difficult following the emergence of the highly contagious coronavirus across the globe and for which many countries imposed lockdowns on non-essential services as well as border restrictions leading to supply chain disruptions and lower demand for certain goods and services. Notwithstanding these challenges, your bank continued its relentless pursuit of improving shareholder returns through the efficient delivery of convenient and accessible financial products and services to our cherished, cherished customers. At the height of the imposed restrictions on movement of people, more than 60% of our workforce were able to work remotely, having been well equipped with the necessary technology to do so. Our existing systems proved resilient in accommodating the large-scale remote working due to our long-term investment in technology. Operating environment. In Ghana, 
the benefits of the central bank's financial sector cleanup activities have begun to trickle in, and this was evident in the presence of a resilient banking industry, which has to date managed to withstand the adverse effects of the pandemic. Overall, the impact of the pandemic on the financial sector's performance seems moderate as banks remain liquid, profitable, and well capitalized. Global GDP estimates show an economic contraction of 4% for 2020, due in large parts to the COVID-19 pandemic, which caused a sharp decline in world trade volumes, commodity prices, and travel restrictions worldwide. The global economy is expected to grow by 5.5% in 2021, even as the effect of the uncertainty surrounding COVID-19, including the emergence of new variants across Europe, India, and South Africa, vaccine rollout and its associated politics pose the greatest risk yet to the growth of the global economy. Despite the challenging op operating environment, Ecobank, your bank, remain indisputably strong, stable, and the preferred bank for individuals and corporates across the country. I'm a, I am glad to announce that your Pan-African bank, Ecobank, Ghana, emerged as the most profitable bank in Ghana for the year 2020. On the domestic front, headline inflation could not be contained within the central bank's target of 8 plus or minus 2% in 2020, as it rose sharply from 7.9% in December 2019 to 11.4% in July 2020, mainly due to the significant pressures on food prices exerted by the panic buying episodes preceding the COVID-19 partial lockdown measures. However, the gradual lifting of restrictions led to the easing of food prices, food price pressures, and a steady decline in headline inflation to 10.4% at end December 2020. The weighted average interbank lending rate also declined to 13.6% in December 2020 from 15.2% .2 for the prior year. Average lending rates compiled from the banking sector also showed a marginal decline to 21.1% in December 2020 from 23.6% in 2019. Interest rates on the money market, however, took a nosedive across the various maturities on the primary yield curve. The 91-day Treasury bill rate shed 61 basis points to 14.09% in December 2020, compared to 14.7% a year ago. Interest rate on the 182-day instrument also declined by 108 basis points to 14.12% in December 2020, from 15.2% over the same period in 2019. The central bank's policy rate was revised downward by 150 basis points to 14.5% in March 2020 and has since been maintained at that rate. The Ghana CD depreciated by 4.1% against the US dollar in 2020 compared to a 12.9% depreciation in 2019. The first few months of the year 2021 have witnessed the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines for frontline staff and selected groups, although the impact of the virus across all sectors of the economy, including the banking sector, still lingers on. The board and management continue to implement the requisite strategic decisions to steer your bank through these uncertain times. Financial highlights. Income statement highlights. We delivered total income of 1.8 billion Ghana CDs in 2020, up 17% from 2019. This resulted in profit after tax growth of 24% and is reflective of our consistent implementation of a well diversified business model and our focus on growing revenue and managing costs and risks even in the face of increased competition and the global pandemic. 
Our total revenue was made up of 74% net interest income and 26% non-interest income, a mix that has come to typify our business model as we harness the benefits of our portfolio mix. Net interest, grew, net interest income grew by 28% to 1.4 billion Ghana CDs, notwithstanding the 7% reduction in loan assets. Non-funded income margins, sorry, non-funded income remains a key revenue source despite the decline in fees and, co and commissions by 11% and trading income by 7% respectively in 2020. The decline in trading income is reflective of the thinner spreads associated with the stable exchange rate environment that prevailed during the year under review. Our profit before tax of 782 million Ghana CDs make us the most profitable bank in the country for 2020. This was generated after setting aside 180 million Ghana CDs as impairment charges. Impairments dropped sharply by 17% from 216 million Ghana CDs in 2019 on the back of improved recoveries from previously written off loans within the year. We will ensure that our robust risk management procedures are continuously updated to safeguard the quality of the loan book. Our cost to income ratio was recorded at 47.9%. In 2019, it was 45.8% for the period under review and compares favorably with the industry ratio. Our return on average assets and equity currently stand at 3.8% and 26% respectively, signifying improved value creation for shareholders. Ecobank Ghana ended the year with an industry-leading market capitalization of 2.3 billion Ghana CDs. Our capital adequacy ratio of 19.5%. 7% is above the regulatory requirement of 13%. Balance sheet highlights. Customer deposits, the highest by any bank in the country, grew by 21% from 9.7 billion Ghana CDs in 2019 to 11.8 billion Ghana CDs in 2020. We are always grateful for the business of our cherished customers. They continue to show faith in us by continually entrusting us with their deposits. We ended the year 2020 with total loans of 4.9 billion Ghana CDs, down 7% from the 5.4 billion Ghana CDs in 2019. The total loan portfolio declined year on year across multiple portfolios, including SME loans, corporate loans, trade financing, and consumer salary lending, a reflection of the reduced production activities due to the impact of COVID-19. This resulted in a loan to deposit ratio of 42%, down from 55% for, for 2019. We continue to maintain a strong balance sheet as we witnessed a 21% growth from the 13.2 billion Ghana CDs for 2019 to 15.9 billion Ghana CDs in 2020, becoming the largest bank by total assets in 2020. Your bank continues to be well capitalized with total equity of 2.4 billion Ghana CDs, the highest in the industry and a capital adequacy ratio of 19.57%, well above the regulatory requirement of 13%. Ecobank Ghana's credit rating has been affirmed by the global credit rating company at AA- Ghana and A1 plus Ghana in the long term and short term respectively. With a stable outlook during the year 2020, the current ratings reflect the bank's established domestic franchise value, resilient financial performance, 
risk appropriate capitalization and adequate loan, loan loss reserve. I must say that we are proud of what we accomplished in 2020 because even in the face of the pandemic, the results reflect how we are helping our customers and returning improved shareholder value. Dividend. Ladies and gentlemen, it, give me, it gives me greatest pleasure, I'll say it again, it gives me the greatest pleasure to inform you that we will, subject to the approval of shareholders, declare the payment of dividend for the 2020 financial year. The board has approved a dividend of 55 pesos per share for all eligible shareholders. Your board arrived at this decision by balancing the need to ensure profit retention for the sustainability of our business with the need to provide liquidity and returns to our cherished shareholders. Compliance with the central bank's guidelines on dividend payment also influenced our decision significantly. During the year, while the Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index declined by 13.98% and the GSE Financial Stock Index also declined by 11.73%, your bank's share price suffered a decline of 11% in line with market trends. Responsible Citizenship at Ecobank, we continue to reflect positive change in our co communities through our corporate social responsibility activities. From our focus on health, education, and financial inclusion to the environment, we are committed to building sound communities and making meaningful impact. As part of its corporate social responsibility, your bank together with the Ecobank Foundation, supported the Ghana COVID-19 Private Sector Fund with an amount of 1.3 million Ghana CDs, 750,000 in cash towards the construction of a 100-bed infectious disease center in Accra, and 550,000 worth of personal protective equipment, PPE. 10,000 COVID-19 test kits were also donated to the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research to be administered in association with the Ghana Health Services under the auspices of the Ministry of Health. These PPE and test kits added to the national buffer stock of essential logistics required for use by our frontline health workers for the early detection, treatment, and timely reporting of COVID-19 cases in Ghana. Ecobank also collaborated with Joy FM to solicit additional funds for the private sector fund intended for the 100-bed infectious disease center, which saw the multimedia group contributing 100,000 Ghana CDs worth of airtime for the campaign. Through the Ghana Association of, Gar of Bankers, Ecobank Ghana also contributed the sum of one of 10 million Ghana CDs presented to the government of Ghana to aid the purchase of critical equipment towards managing the COVID-19 pandemic through public education and feeding programs for the vulnerable. Our total COVID-19 related donations therefore amounted to 1.75 million Ghana CDs. Additionally, Ecobank waived charges on its digital channels during the surge of the period of the pandemic to encourage people to stay at home and perform their, and perform their financial transactions remotely. The bank also embarked on a series of webinars with a number of stakeholders, including the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention to help create mass awareness among the public on COVID-19 safety and preventative measures. These activities were complemented with a year-long educational campaign on radio, print, and social media platforms by the bank. I am indeed proud of the support we continue to provide to our communities year in, year out. And I want to express my gratitude to our shareholders for giving us the opportunity to improve and change lives.
30th anniversary of the bank. The bank celebrated its 30th anniversary during the year. There were various activities for customers and staff to mark this significant milestone. COVID-19 impacted on the nature of the celebrations. The activities included a gospel concert, customer reward campaigns, and Thanksgiving church service, amongst others. Awards. In recognition of our commitment, diligence, and efficiency, Ecobank earned several local and international awards in 2020, notably CIMG 2020 Hall of Fame Best Bank, Global Banking and Finance Award 2020 Best Investment Bank in Ghana 2020, Sustainability and Social Investment Award for Best Company in Environmental Sustainability Project 2020, Sustainability and Social Investment Award for Best Company in Speciality Healthcare Support Project 2020. National Student Awards Students Bank of the Year 2020. Ghana Business Awards Company of the Year 2020. Ghana Business Awards Excellence in, in, in Innovation and Technology 2020. We dedicate these awards to our loyal customers and we pledge to continue working hard to place Ecobank at the apex of the industry on all fronts. Conclusion. Fellow shareholders, on behalf of the board and management of the bank, I thank you for choosing Ecobank Ghana. We remain focused in our drive to continue returning exceptional value to you. I conclude by thanking the managing director of the bank, Mr. Daniel Saki, my other colleagues on the board, senior management and staff at Becker Bank Ghana for diligently contributing to this stellar performance for 2020. Their contribution and commitment year after year to ensure the continued growth and profitability of our bank is most commendable and highly appreciated. To our esteemed shareholders and cherished customers, we acknowledge that we will not have a business without you. For this reason, we undertake to continue working hard to win in the marketplace. We also say thank you to our regulators, the Bank of Ghana, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Ghana Stock Exchange for their support. Finally, we thank God Almighty for yet another successful year. Before we proceed with the main items on the agenda, I shall now call on the company secretary to explain fully the processes for joining this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning once again, distinguished shareholders. The voting process is as follows. Voting can be done using either of two options. These are A, on the online platform, or B, via the USSD short code. The two voting options will allow you to cast your vote in real time. Shareholders joining from abroad must, however, use the online platform only as the USSD short code voting will not work abroad. To participate in the voting exercise via the online platform, kindly locate the vote box at the bottom of your broadcast screen and follow these four steps. One, enter the same four character unique token number used to join the meeting. Two, click cast your vote. Three, now you will see a list of resolutions to be voted for. Four, follow the voting by clicking the plus sign. Then you can select your vote option. There are three voting options, four, 
against and abstain. To participate in the voting exercise via the short code, kindly follow these three steps. One, dial star 899 star three hash on your phone. Enter the same four character unique token number used to join the meeting. Three, now select your vote option and press send on your phone. There are three voting options, for, against, and abstain. Please note that you can only vote on any of the resolutions when the chairman declares voting open on that specific resolution. So for example, you cannot jump ahead and vote on resolution five when the chairman has only op opened voting on resolution one. Also, once the chairman declares the close of voting on any specific resolution, you, you will no longer be able to access or vote on that resolution. So to recap, one, voting instructions are available on the bank's AGM website for ease of reference. Two, the shareholder right manager is available online to answer questions in the chat box in real time. Three, voting on any resolution can only be done when the chairman declares voting open on that specific resolution. And four, the same voting procedure will be used for all resolutions to be voted on during the AGM. Thank you. Thank you again, Abby. <clears throat> item one on the agenda. The first item on the agenda is to consider and adopt the statement of accounts and the balance sheet of the company for the period ended 31st of December, 2020 together with the reports of the directors and auditors thereon. If you will turn to page 36 of the annual report, you will find the report of the directors. I will now call upon the representative of the company's auditors, Messrs. PricewaterhouseCoopers, to read the report of the auditors to the members. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, dear shareholders. The auditor's report is set out on pages 54 to 58 of your annual booklet. Independent auditor's report to the members of Ecobank Ghana. Report on the audit of the financial statements. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements give a true and fair view of the financial position of Ecobank Ghana Limited, the bank, and its subsidiaries together called the group, as at 31st December 2020, and of the financial performance and the cash flows of the bank standing alone, and the group for the year then ended in accordance with international financial reporting standards, and in the manner required by the Companies Act at 992 and the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institution Act at 930. Mr. Chair, the financial statements we have audited are set out on pages 60 to 153 of the booklet, and they include the separate and consolidated statement of financial position as at 31st December 2020, the separate and consolidated statements of comprehensive income for the year then ended, the separate and consolidated statements of changes in equity for the year then ended, the separate and consolidated statements of cash flows for the year then ended, and the notes to the financial statements which include a summary of significant accounting policies. We conducted our audit in accordance with international standards on auditing. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements section of our report. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. 
We are independent of the group in accordance with the International Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants, issued by the International Ethics Standards Board for Accountants, and the independence requirements of Section 143 of the Companies Act that are relevant to our audit of the financial statements. We have also fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with the Code. Mr. Chair, our report includes other key audit matters, and key audit matters are those matters that, in our professional judgment, were of most significance in our audit of the banks and the group's financial statement for the current period. These matters were addressed in the context of the audit of the financial statements as a whole, and informing our opinion thereon. We do not provide a separate opinion on these key audit matters. And for this year, the key audit matter relates to impairment allowance on loans and advances, which is 332.2 million out of the gross loan book of 5.3 billion. The impairment requirements and the IFRS 9 are based on a expected credit loss model. The ECL model estimates the credit loss over the life of the financial instruments. The amounts of the ECL recognized is dependent on the risk of default on the part of the counterparty taking into account the probability of default, forward-looking information, laws given default, and the time value of money. Mr. Chair, the accounting policies, critical estimates, and judgments, and impairment charge relating to these items are disclosed in Note 2.9.1, Note 5, Note 12, and Note 19 of the financial statements. In terms of how we address the key audit matter, we updated our understanding of the key controls within the loan origination and approval, as well as monitoring and recovery processes and tested relevant controls. We also tested the adequacy of qualitative and quantitative factors applied in assessing significant increase in credit risks. We checked the completeness and accuracy of the respective credit exposures assessed for ECL and other inputs including collaterals. We tested the methodology used in determining the multi-scenario for 12-month and lifetime probability of default. We also checked the appropriateness of IFRS 9 disclosures in the financial statements. Other information. The directors are responsible for the other information included in this annual booklet, and they include the corporate information, financial highlights, report of the directors, corporate governance framework, shareholder information, five-year financial information, and the value added statements. The other information does not include our, the financial statements and our audit report thereon. Our opinion on the separate and consolidated financial statement does not cover the other information, and we do not. I will not express any form of assurance conclusions thereon. In connection with our audit of the financial statements, our responsibility is to read the other information identified above and in doing so, consider whether the other information is materially inconsistent with the financial statements or our knowledge obtained in the audit or otherwise appears to be materially misstated. If based on the work we have performed on the other information that we obtained prior to the date of our audit opinion, we conclude that there is a material misstatement of this other information, we are required to report that fact. We have nothing to report in this regard. Responsibilities of the directors for the financial statements. The directors are responsible for the preparation of the financial statements that give a true and fair view in accordance with international financial reporting standards and in the manner required by Act 992 and 930. They are also responsible for internal controls as the directors determine is necessary to enable the preparation of financial statements that are free from material misstatements, whether due to fraud or error. The directors are also responsible for overseeing the group's financial reporting processes our responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements. As auditors, our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an audit report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but it's not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with international standards of auditing will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. Misstatements can arise from fraud or error and are considered material. If individually or in aggregate, they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of these financial statements. As part of an audit in accordance with international standards on auditing, 
we exercise professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risks of material misstatement or the financial statements, whether due to fraud or error. We design and perform audit procedures responsive to those risks and obtain audit evidence that is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. We also evaluate the overall presentation, structure, and content of the financial statements, including the disclosures, and whether the financial statements represent the underlying transactions and events in a manner that achieves fair presentation. We also communicate with the directors regarding, among others, the plan scope and timing of our audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal control that we identify during our audit. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. The Companies Act, Act 992 requires that in carrying out our audit, we consider and report on the following matters. We confirm that we have obtained all the information and explanations which to the best of our knowledge and belief were necessary for the purposes of our audit. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept by the bank so far as appears from our examination of those books. And the group's statement of financial position and the group's statement of comprehensive income are in agreement with the books of account. In accordance with Act 930, we confirm that the accounts give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the bank and the results of operations for the period under review. We were able to obtain all the information and explanations required for the efficient performance of our duties as auditors. The bank's transactions were within its powers, and the bank has in all material respects complied with the provisions of Act 930. With respect to the provisions of the Anti-Money Laundering Act Act 749 as amended, and the Anti-Terrorism Act Act 762, and the regulations made under these enactments, we did not identify any instances of non-compliance based on the procedures we performed. The engagement partner on the audit resulting in this independent auditor's report is myself, Michael Asiedwanchi, a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana, and this report is signed by PricewaterhouseCoopers, dated the 25th day of March, 2021, here in Accra. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mr. PricewaterhouseCoopers. Now, before I propose the adoption of the accounts, I would like to invite any questions from members. Mr. Chairman, there are a number of um, questions from the shareholders. With your permission, I will read the questions. Please proceed. The first one comes from the proxy holder for SNIT, uh, Mrs. Nelson Kofi. Um, she says, I wish to congratulate the board and management of Ecobank for delivering a sterling performance despite the COVID-19 pandemic. A record profit of the tax and, um, and ROE increasing from 24, I can't read it, in 2019 uh, to 30, in 2020, it's not too clear. Um, she comments on ROE, the, 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 in, the improved performance in ROE uh, in our profit after tax earnings per share. And she says the bank's digi digitalization strategy has yielded results. Total customer deposits grew by 21%. Um, it's, it's a strong testament of um, customer trust and confidence in the Ecobank brand. Her question is, I would like to know, I'd like to know, um, since the bank has a strategy of growing revenue, when Ecobank will achieve its past record, where non-funded income was about 50% of total income? Thank you. I'll, I'll repeat the question. I would like to know 
since the bank has a strategy of growing revenue, when will EcoBank achieve its past record where non-funded income was about 50% of total income? Mr. Chairman, the second comment comes from Mr. Samson Ashong of the Shareholder Association. He congratulates the bank on its excellent performance, um, speaks to uh, comments on good work on the lowering of impairments, um, which is lower than that of the previous year. His question is, what is the bank's position uh, with respect to the possibility of utilizing so solar energy to improve on electricity costs. Mr. Chairman, do I continue? There are about three more questions. <clears throat> yes, please do. Okay, right. Um, the third question comes from a shareholder, Haruna al Hassan. His question is, revenue grew by about 17% for the year, despite COVID-related challenges. How did you achieve this? Sorry, could I have his name again, please? Haruna al Hassan, a shareholder. Thank you. Thank you. The fourth question is from a shareholder, Vivian kutin -Mensa. She asks, net fees and commissions declined compared to 2019. What accounted for this and how will this be addressed? Can I have the name of the shareholder again, please? Mrs. Vivian Kutin Mensa. Mrs. Vivian Mensa. Mr. Chairman, shall I pause for the response and then there are two other questions to follow. Um, I think what I'm trying to do is to write them all down. So if we can have, if we can have number five and six, then we'll start on the answers. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the fifth question is from Rosina Kwaku, Kwakumi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, her question is, personal, personnel expenses went up even though staff headcount reduced. How did this come about? Can I have that again, please? Question five. Personnel yes. expenses went up even though staff headcount reduced. How did this come about? Okay, thank you. It's from Rosina. Kwakumu, is that right? Kwakumu. Is that right? Kwakume. <laughs> Sorry. The last question on that section. Loans and advances to customers declined compared to 2019. What accounted for this? This is from a shareholder um, called Mrs. Gladys Uasari. Thank you. Mrs. Gladys. Wu Asari. Okay. Thank you very much, shareholders, for your questions. <clears throat> we'll start with question number one. And I would um, request the managing director to address this question. Thank you very much, Chairman. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yes, yes uh, we can hear you. Oh, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, um, our shareholder who holds the proxy uh, uh, for SNIT. Uh, you are right. Uh, we thank you. We accept heartily your uh, congratulatory uh, message. You are right uh, in terms of uh, what we are doing to um, bring back the split between funded and non-funded uh, income. Um, yes. 
as background for 2019, um, the funded income uh, was responsible for around 33%. Um, and last year, uh, it dropped to 26%, roughly 11% uh, uh, change. As you are aware, last year was a one in a hundred year event which uh, impacted all aspects of uh, our economic lives. With the disruption in activity, supply chains virtually trade ground to a halt. Trade has been one of the major contributors to our fee income, and with the drop in trade activities due to the absence of any local, man any significant manufacturing activity and import, we then realized that that portion was totally uh, had to be put aside in the sense that nothing was coming from that uh, segment. But on the other side, having invested heavily in technology, we then realized that our ability to allow our customers to transact on our digital platforms contributed strongly towards growing other fee-based income. Another reason why we also had a drop was with restrictions on travel, nobody was able to move out of the, of the country. Of course, uh, related to that would be revenue, fee income on card utilization. So when you travel and use your card, FX gains, uh, volumes and other things were also totally uh, absent. In addition to that, remittance, which also plays a significant role in our fee income, ha was also affected because uh, the sources of remittance uh, had been affected by the lockdown themselves. So with these changes, we've seen the drop. Our immediate preoccupation is to try and rebuild back to uh, pre-2019 uh, levels. One, the reason for this is that COVID is still here with us. Um, even though vaccination has started, we still believe that uh, less than 5% of the population has uh, uh, been vaccinated. So we believe we will have to deal with the effects of COVID uh, for some time to come. So our medium term objective is to quickly build back to 33% and longer term uh, get back to the 50% uh, funded and non-funded income split. I hope this answers your question. Question two had to do with um, solar energy. Um, the role, okay. Well, the position of the bank cons in considering lower solar energy to improve on electricity costs. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this question. Uh, being environmentally conscious, the bank had over the past five years pursued a deliberate strategy of improving the contribution of solar to our energy uh, consumption mix. Uh, we do have uh, 65 branches currently, and I can confirm that as we speak, 32 of these branches are running on solar. We have a joint uh, plan to install solar on our branches, in our branches, to make sure that during the day we can be powered fully by solar, and if there is a shortfall, it can be met from the normal grid. So we have a hybrid situation where we are running on both solar and electricity energy in uh, the branches. What is interesting is that uh, we've achieved this without actually putting out any financial outlay in the sense that we have engaged stakeholders who then walk into our branch, selected branches, install solar, and we have done the calculation such that we are basically spending the exact amount we're spending on electricity energy. Savings from the solar energy re results in lower charges. And the savings are used to pay for the solar energy installations. So we expect that over five years, each of these solar energy installations will be fully amortized. And the actual savings would now be coming in after year six. So within the first five years, we have more or less sterilized our spend on electricity energy. Because whatever savings we are making from using solar is then used to pay for the cost of the solar energy installation. So we are doing two things. One, keeping our capital expenditure low, and then two, benefiting directly from a switch, from partly from electricity grid to solar energy. Those branches in the next, after five years, will now be fully solar, and then the benefits will start coming in. So we are working on it. Uh, the challenge in going, ensuring that all the 65 are covered is dependent upon one, whether we own the branch, 
to the willingness of the proprietor to allow solar uh, energy to be installed on the building. So there is a challenge in trying to uh, negotiate. Some have categorically said no because it will have an impact in terms of defacing uh, or changing the uh, appearance of their buildings. But at least I can confirm that 32 of our branches have agreed it has been done and is running. This year we intend to add three more branches so that we can get to 35 by the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Andy. And thank you, Mrs. Kofi, and thank you, Samson Ashon. Okay. The third question was from Aruna Al Hassan, whose uh, question was with regards to the revenue, which grew by 17% for the year, despite the COVID um, challenges, and is asking what magic we employed. <laughs> um, the reality is that the emergence of COVID-19 validated our decision to pursue a digitization strategy in the last few years. So at the advent of COVID, we were very well placed to deal with challenges of the pandemic. In fact, pre-COVID, 80% of our transactions was already outside of the branch network. Hence, there was little to no disruptions in the bank's ability to effectively meet customers' needs in spite of COVID. Although we are market leaders in the digitization journey, we continue to innovate and to improve our digital journey. In addition, our well-diversified business model provides us the requisite balance and stability for sustained growth. Mr. MD, if you have anything you'd like to add to that. Um, Tim, I think you have uh, um, answered uh, the uh, question. Uh, what is important is that this is a, an ongoing journey. We will continue to improve our investment in this uh, uh, in technology. We will continue to leverage on it to improve the customer experience. Going forward, given the increasing number of clients, our expectation is that we should be able to deliver the same quality of service to a client, whether you are coming into our branch or whether you are going through our electronic channels. And we believe that leveraging on technology, we will be able to improve the customer experience by putting the power in your arms, in, in your palms. If you are deciding when you open an account, if you are deciding when you transfer funds, then you have the choice and you have the comfort of doing it wherever, when you are. And that effect of taking out the limitation of having to get into a branch allows you to do it at your own pace, at your own time. And we believe that technology has facilitated that and will continue to play a major role in improving that service delivery. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, MD. Now, and thank you, Haruna. Now, with regards to the question from Mrs. Vivian Mensah, uh, that dovetails into the question from Mrs. Kofi. So um, her question from Mrs. Mensah was in connection with the net fees and commissions that declined in 2019. Um, so I wonder whether the MD you would like to expand and answer the question for Mrs. Vivian Mensah. I think it, it's uh, the same question. What I would like to add is that um, in addition to confirming that uh, some level of vaccination has started and a gradual return to normalcy, we have started seeing an uptick. However, we are cautious because until we can achieve herd immunity where about 70 to 80 percent of the population is vaccinated, to ensure a full return to normalcy, we cannot confirm that we are going to get back to pre-pandemic level. But what is heartwarming is that even for Q1 2021, we have started seeing an uptick in fees and commissions and believe that given the pace of the current recovery and also the monetary easing that has just happened uh, last weekend with the central bank reducing the uh, money, monetary policy rate by about 1%, we believe that it will spare demand and improve uh, people's access or requests for funding. And that will help us continue the upward trajectory we have seen for Q1. We are positive that we'll be able to improve the funded and non-funded income mix before the end of the year compared to the 2020 figure. 
Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you, MD. Uh, the, the first question was from Rosina Kwakume. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, her question is with regards to staff expenses, uh, personnel expenses that went up. Um, I, I would like to actually start by complimenting our staff because um, staff productivity uh, measured by revenue per staff increased by 24% during the year. Now, inflation for the year was 10.4% and growth in staff costs was 7.7%, which is lower than the inflation in the country. So although our staff costs increased by 7.7%, the productivity went up by 24%. So I'd like to commend them for that. And finally, the question from Mrs. Gladys Asari. This is loans and advances to customers that declined in 2019. MD, would you like to take that? Yes, please. I think I'd, I'd already uh, stated that with the disruption in supply chain and with the uh, restriction on movement, uh, major uh, uh, production activities had ground to a halt. What we saw were mainly essential production and also sectors in the economy where we, uh, we had seen some uh, elements of growth, especially in the pharmaceutical, the health sector. Our focus during the pandemic was to ensure, first to ensure the safety of our staff, our clients, and other stakeholders with whom we interact with on a regular uh, basis. With a dampened economic environment, demand was uh, demand for loans was reduced. If you are engaging, uh, probably such, uh, running a restaurant and that restaurant is closed, obviously your need for funding will be uh, reduced or will not be existent. Uh, we saw the impact on schools that had to be closed. We saw the in impact on the hospitality industry in general. So in the dumping economic environment, demand for loans had come down. However, as mentioned, as stated right now, opportunities ex uh, popped up and given our position, we capitalized on opportunities to grow our exposures in the health and uh, allied uh, sectors. But overall, loans and advances came down, but this does not take into consideration the fact that we did have exposures on our books, which were refinanced by government bonds. So. For the year 2020, around 180 million cities of our loan book had been paid off with bonds. So they are showing as increased investments in bonds. But in reality, these are loans that were moved from loans into bonds because government had made an effort to settle it by issuing bonds. So if you add back the 183 million, then the drop in loans and advances was not as steep as uh, expected. But they, definitely there was a drop, and that reflects the dampened economic environment. Once again, our expectation is that with the gradual resumption of business activities, with the gradual resumption of normalcy, we would expect an uptick in demand for loans and for that matter, our ability to meet uh, the needs of the sector. But your bank is well positioned, well resourced, and very liquid to be able to meet any needs that will come. Thank you. Thank you, MD, and thank you very much to the shareholders for their questions. I now propose that a statement of accounts and a balance sheet of the company for the year ended 31st of December 2020, and the reports of the directors and auditors now laid before the meeting be adopted. May I call on a member to second the motion? Mr. Chairman, sorry. Mr. Chairman, Mrs. Nelson Kofi, the proxy for SNIT, so seconds the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kofi. May I call upon you now to proceed to cast your vote electronically? I declare the voting open.
I declare the voting closed. Mr. Chairman, there are 84 votes cast in favor of the motion, two against the motion, and three abstentions. Thank you. I now declare the resolution carried. Item two on the agenda. The directors recommend that dividend in the sum of 55 Ghana pesos per share and totaling 177 million 403,164.95 Ghana CDs be declared and paid on the 25th of June 2021 to members registered in the books of the company as at the close of business on the 14th day of May 2021. I would like to invite any members to ask questions. Mr. Chairman, there are two questions from shareholders. May I proceed to read them? Yes, please, Abby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's a question from Mr. Kwesi Atubra, a shareholder. He asks, considering the earnings per share of one CD 69 pesos, one Ghana CD 69 pesos, why are you paying dividend of 55 pesos only? Mr. Chairman, the second question is uh, from Amasewa Bonsu, uh, a shareholder. Her question is, dividend per share has gone up by more than 100% from 30 pesos to 55 pesos. Is this in line with the Bank of Ghana directive last year of no dividend payments in the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Abby. <sighs> we'll take the question from um, Kwesi Atubra. Mr. Kwesi Atubra. This question, this question was, I'm getting a feedback. I'll, go, I'll carry on. Okay. Mr. Atubra's question was considering that the earnings per share was one CD sixty nine pesos. Why are we paying a dividend of only fifty five pesos per share? The adverse economic impact of the COVID nineteen is still very present. And we therefore clearly must be cautious in our dividend payments. There are COVID induced loan extensions. Moratoriums still exist on our books. The approved dividend amount factors in several considerations, including central bank approvals, profitability liquidity needs over the short term, liquidity needs over the long term, capital adequacy considerations, other capital activity. Having considered all these factors, the board considers the amount of 55 Ghana pass for the appropriate figure. This has also been approved by the central bank, showing clearly that the central bank is also convinced that all the factors have been considered. As a shareholder, I also would love to see more dividends, mm -hmm. but I think that the support, the support that we have given to the bank has ensured 
that the bank has moved from, from position of paying no dividend to now paying dividends. And we are confident that going forward, we will grow the profitability of the company and we'll be pay, able to pay high dividends. SMD, I wonder whether you want to add anything. Um, Mr. Chair, I think you have answered the question. Uh, there's nothing much to ask, but if you permit me, I'll add uh, the second question. Um, yes, which the one from uh, Ama Sawat Bonsu. Yes. Yeah, the it question. also takes off from here, so carry on, please. Yes. Yeah, it talks about a 100 percent increase in dividend from 30 pesos to 55 pesos. Uh, in line, is this and ask whether this is in line with the Bank of Ghana directive uh, on dividend freeze in the wake of uh, COVID 19. Yes, I confirm that uh, the dividend uh, payment had received the approval of uh, the regulator. And the fact that the regulator has approved confirms that they had taken into consideration the capital adequacy position of the bank, the NPL position, the provisions that have been taken to cover this, the liquidity needs of the bank and loan projection growth for uh, the next one to two years to be able to allow uh, the payment of this level of dividend. So, yes, dividend is going up by 100%, but we have met all the regulatory requirements that have been set uh, prior to uh, declaring the dividend. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, MD, and thank you to our two shareholders for the questions. May I now request a shareholder to move the motion? Mr. Chairman, Mrs. Gladys Wu Asari so moves the motion. Thank you very much, Mrs. Asari. May I call upon a shareholder to second the motion? Mr. Chairman, uh, Amasawa Bonsu so seconds the motion. A shareholder so seconds the motion. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Bonsu. May I call upon you to proceed to cast your vote electronically? I declare the voting open.
Thank you. <clears throat> I declare the voting closed. Mr. Chairman, 94 votes were cast. 92 votes were cast in favor of the motion, two against the motion, and zero abstentions. Thank you. I now declare the resolution carried. Item three on the agenda. Your directors request your authorization to fix the to fix the remuneration of the auditors. Are there any questions on this, please? If there are no questions on this, may I have a shareholder to move the motion, please? Mr. Chairman, uh, Rosina Kwakume, a shareholder, so moves the motion. Thank you very much, Rosina Kwakume. May I please have a member to second the motion? Mr. Chairman, Vivian Kutinmensa, a shareholder, so seconds the motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vivian Mensa. May I call upon you to proceed to cast your vote electronically? I declare the voting open.
I now declare the voting closed. Mr. Chairman, um, 88 votes, votes were cast. 84 votes were cast in favor of the motion. One vote cast against the motion and three abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. I now declare the resolution carried. There's no gain saying that 2020 has been a very difficult year for everybody globally. When we look at the Ecobank family, there are members, there are friends, there are colleagues uh, who have lost loved ones. They've lost them through illness, through old age, and some maybe through the impact of the COVID-19. Your board of directors would like to express our sympathies to all the families who are bereaved. And we ask that their souls rest in perfect peace. Going forward, we place ourselves in the hands of the, of the Almighty. And we also ask that we all do what we can to mitigate the effects of the COVID-19 by following and continuing to follow the protocols. With that sobering message, I now declare the meeting closed and we will invite Reverend Albert Bingo to close it first. Shall we pray? <laughs> our Lord and our Master, we are thankful unto you. We started this meeting with you. You have brought us to a successful end. We are thankful unto you for your bank, EcoBank PLC. We thank you for the great success that you've given us. We thank you, O oh God, for the chairman, for the board, for management, and for the entire staff. We thank you for the customers that you have given unto us. Our prayer is that, Father, you will lead this bank onto greater heights. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, members. Thank you, colleagues. And thank you, staff, management and staff of Echo Bank. Thank you very much. And may you all have a blessed day.
Rapid Transfer is now available as an app. Send money fast from your phone at great rates. Meaning more money reaches home. Where it can make things happen. For those you love most. And for a limited time, send instantly for 0% fees. Rapid Transfer. My money, my Africa. Download it now.